Hello there, very good evening and welcome to Primetime News on TV1. We're coming to you live and direct as always from our news first studios here in Colombo. The COVID-19 pandemic is still a very real threat here in Sri Lanka. The authorities have announced measures or regulations preventing gatherings across the country. However, protests did continue to be staged across the country as well as certain gatherings for celebrations. We've got details of these stories and more lined up, but first, a look at your top stories for tonight. Basil Rajapaksa sworn in as the Minister of Finance. Shashendra Rajapaksa appointed as State Minister of promoting the production and regulating the supply of organic fertilizer. Mohan De Silva sworn in as the State Minister of Coast Conservation. Protests continue across the island. 40 arrested for violating quarantine regulations. Speaker of Parliament accused of acting contrary to consensus reached at the party leaders' meeting. In your top story for tonight, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa and newly appointed National List Parliamentarian Basil Rajapaksa were handed over new ministerial portfolios today. They were sworn in for President Gotabe Rajapaksa. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa took oaths as the Minister of Economic Policies and Plan Implementation. Ten entities including the National Planning Department, the Department of Census and Statistics and the Public Utilities Commission will fall under his ministry. Basil Rajapaksa took oaths as the Minister of Finance before the President today. The General Treasury and 12 other affiliated bodies fall under his ministry. Institutions relating to government revenue management affairs including the Sri Lanka Customs, Department of Inland Revenue, Department of Excise, National Lotteries Board, Development Lotteries Board and the Import and Export Control Department falls under his purview. In addition, the central bank, state banks, financial, insurance and related institutions, Sri Lanka Insurance Board, Sri Lanka Insurance Cooperation and its subsidiaries and affiliated companies, Credit Information Bureau, the Department of Registrar of Companies, Securities and Exchange Commission and the Sri Lanka Export Credit Insurance falls under his purview. They fall under the list of entities linked to banks, financial and capital market policies and regulatory affairs. Further, 17 funds, including the National Insurance Trust Fund, Employees Trust Fund, Srimavasana Fund, T Shakti Fund and the Central Cultural Fund also falls under his ministry. The new Minister of Finance, Basil Rajpaksa, assumed duties at the ministry today. He assumed duties at the auspicious time after multi-religious observances. We suffered a lot due to the 30-year-long war. We ended the war mainly because of the actions of the three members of the Rajpaksa family. The three Rajpaksas did a lot in coordinating these efforts. This is not something that I am saying to canvas for the Rajpaksas. I have no intention to do that. We know that J.R. Jai Vardhana was intimidated when Rajiv Gandhi dropped Dal onto the country. After that, the government entered into an agreement with Gandhi that was bad for our country. This is how the leaders in our country acted at that time. As Mahindra Rajapaksa said, India is our neighbour and sometimes we have the most issues with our neighbours. We need to manage the threats and influence exerted on us from our neighbour India. Even today we see this happening. During the war we felt this discomfort a lot. Minister Basil Rajapaksa must be given the credit of managing this pressure. This is a time when we are suffering economically and your presence at such a time is considered as a strength.
My priority is the priority of the people, which is also the priority of the President, Prime Minister and everyone in the government. Although I will function as the Minister of Finance, I request the farmers, fishermen, laborers, professionals and state sector employees to consider me as their colleague and guide the way and work hand in hand with us. I would also like to request the journalists and trade unions in the country to work with us during these trying times. I mention trying times not because it is my view of the situation, but because many people in this country think that it is. The chief incumbent also said that, but we have faced even more serious times. We emerged victorious when we faced even more serious political challenges. The main reason for those victories is the people who supported us. This is a challenging task. Let's face this challenge together. The needs and priorities of the general public are the priorities of the government. We will perform these duties honestly for the people and we request you to support us in doing that. Basil Rajapaksa took oaths as a member of parliament today before Speaker Mahinda Yapabe Wardana. Basil Rajapaksa entered parliament through the national list in 2007. He was an influential figure during Mahindra Rajapaksa's presidential election campaign in 2005. In 2010, Basil Rajapaksa entered parliament after securing a record number of votes in the Gampaha district by contesting under the Sri Lanka Freedom Party ticket. During his stint as Minister of Economic Development between 2010 and 2015, Basil Rajapaksa spearheaded development projects such as the Uturu Vasanthaya and Naganahira Navodaya. He also introduced concepts for new public welfare programs. Following a setback at the 2015 presidential polls, it was Basil Rajapaksa who led efforts to form a new political party under the name Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna. It is no secret that Basil Rajapaksa's efforts saw the SLPP securing massive victories at the provincial, presidential and parliamentary elections within a short period after being established. Basil Rajapaksa's political journey has been remarkable, starting from his 1977 election loss as the youngest candidate in the Mulkirigala electorate, running up to the formation of a new political party. Former Ambassador Udayanga Viratunga has said that those in the government, including the President and Prime Minister, are able to hold their positions due to the party and work plan of Basil Rajapaksa. In a Facebook post, Viratunga adds that granting a senior position to Basil Rajapaksa is justifiable on all fronts and is a move that must take place. The President has issued a gazette amending the subjects and functions of some ministries. This includes the Finance Ministry. According to the gazette, the recently established Selendiva Investment Limited has been brought under the State Minister of Urban Development, Waste Disposal and Community Cleanliness. The Gazette has also introduced a new state ministry for coast conservation and low-lying lands development. The Marine Environment Protection Authority now falls under its purview. According to the Gazette, a state ministry has been established for promoting the production and regulating the supply of organic fertilizer, paddy and grains, organic foods, vegetables, fruits, chilies, onion and potato cultivation, seed production and advanced technology agriculture. Seven entities, including the National Fertilizer Secretariat and Ceylon Fertilizer Company Limited, have been listed under this state ministry. Meanwhile, two state ministers took oaths before the president today. Shashindra Rajapaksa took oaths as the state minister of promoting the production and regulating the supply of organic fertilizer and paddy and grains, organic foods, vegetables, fruits, chilies, onion and potato cultivation, seed production and advanced technology agriculture. Mohan De Silva took oaths as the State Minister of Coast Conservation and Low-Lying Lands Development.
Meanwhile, MP Sagra Kariwasam has been appointed as the Deputy National Organiser of the Sri Lanka Podhijana Perumuna. He also serves as the General Secretary of the party. The Prime Minister's media unit said Kariwasam was appointed to the position following the resignation of former parliamentarian Jayanta Katagoda. Sri Lanka Podhijana Perumuna supporters celebrated Basil Rajpaksa's return to Parliament today. Shopping now. LK. Police arrested over 40 people across the country today for staging protests. Now, more than 33 of these people were arrested today at a protest that was staged at the parliamentary roundabout. <laughs> The police intervened to disperse a protest organized by the Inter-University Students' Federation at the Parliamentary Roundabout today. The protest was staged against the General Sir John Kotalawala National Defence University Bill, but the police who were present before the protest began arrested the protesters for violating quarantine regulations. <laughs> Let's go! 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 Let's go!
33 civil and political activists were arrested by the Mirihana and Talangama police. A tense situation then arose between the police officers and journalists at the location. The suspects were produced before the Alut Kade Magistrates Court this afternoon. This was the situation opposite the court. The suspects were released on personal bails of 25,000 rupees each. A tense situation arose when a group of protesters who were earlier arrested and released on bail were taken for quarantine opposite the Hulstorf Magistrate Court today. Is this how political problems in the country are solved? We can see the true face of the government now. Who is the man who ordered you to bear arms and come here? The JVP staged a protest in Akurasa opposing the General Sir John Kotalavala National Defence University bill, the rise in the cost of living, fertiliser shortage and fuel price hike. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. 
Four individuals who participated in a protest organized by the JVP in Hatton were also arrested by the police. Another protest was staged in Nugegoda, opposing the General Sir John Kotalavala National Defence University Bill. Protesters in Kegol dispersed after the police continued to warn them to call off the protest. <laughs> A tense situation arose opposite the National Hospital this afternoon against reports of preparations to arrest the General Secretary of the Joint Health Workers Union, Venerable Tampitiya Sugathanand Thero. He had alleged that there is a plan to arrest him when he arrived at the premises of the Health Ministry for a discussion. <laughs> Samagi Janabalavege lawmakers staged a protest led by opposition leader Sajid Premadasa opposite the parliamentary complex today. The protest was held opposing several moves including the ban on protests. The protest lasted for about one hour. What was the purpose of these peaceful and democratic protests? The government is aggravating the woes, hunger and thirst of the people. They have allowed spas to reopen. They don't mind physical contact at spas but are against protests. They consider the COVID-19 outbreak a blessing. The government is using it to suppress public dissent. The public has a right to engage in protests. Several magistrates have ordered that their rights should be respected. The government cannot be allowed to act as they wish. The government is trying to ban media institutions and social media because they are covering these protests. The government is using suppression as a tool to hide its flaws. Meanwhile, the General Sir John Kothalavala National Defence University Bill was taken up for a debate in Parliament today. Mahinda Jai Singh and a group of students were arrested yesterday. Today, Joseph Stalin and some members of student unions were taken into custody. Why are they bringing this bill forward at a time when people are being suppressed from expression of their opinion? This is not being done by the police. It is being done based on health reasons. It is not a politically motivated decision. The Director General of Health Services issued orders frequently in keeping with quarantine regulations. These orders are issued to the police chief. We are speaking based on the orders issued to the police chief. Therefore, the Director General of Health Services must be blamed for these arrests and not the police.
ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ವರದ ಪಟ್ಟವನ್ನು ಸೌಖ್ಯ ಸೇವಾ ಅಧ್ಯಕ್ಷ ಮಿಸ ಪೊಲೀಸ್ ಸೌಖ್ಯ ನೀತಿ ಮೇವೆಡಾವೇ ದೇಶ ಪಾಲನೆ ಹೇತು ಪಾತ್ರ ಪಾವಿಚಿಕರಣ ಕೇನಕ ಮಹಿತಾನೆ ಓಣ ಬಾಬೆಕ್ಟ ತೇರೇನವ ಆಬಿಟ್ಟ ದನಗನ್ನಟ ತಿವೇನ ಆಕಾರಯಟ ಕಿಸಿವ ಪಿಸಿಆರ್ ಹೋ ಆಂಟಿಜನ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಲರ್ನ್ ದಟ್ ದಿ ಗವರ್ನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ಸ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಸಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿಥೌಟ್ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಪಿಸಿಆರ್ ಓ ಆಂಟಿಜನ್ ಟೆಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ and then subject them to quarantine at distant locations in the country this is the government's new tool of oppression they are violating the rights of the people by using covid-19 as a cover they have forgotten the fundamental rights bestowed on the people by the constitution they have deprived the people of these rights and are directly asking them to avoid opposing the government this is regrettable we wish to state that the opposition samagi janabala vegya will stand for the rights of the people anni varinma peni sitinawa kiyana eka mam me avasthawaye prakash karana In more news from Parliament party leaders have decided to postpone the debate on the central bank report that was scheduled for tomorrow. Now this comes as a dispute has arisen on who would put forward the motion for the debate. The opposition allege that the agreement reached for parliamentarian Anur Kumar Desanayak to present the proposal had later been changed. Danaganna kemathi obutumage isthavare vivade ma baradipu vivadeyata pavettena oda kiyala. Ha? ರಂಜಿತ್ ಭಂಡಾರ ಮಂತ್ರಿ ತುಮಾ ಈ ಯೋಜನಾ ಇದ್ರಿಪತ್ಕರಣ ಸೂದಾನ ಇನ್ನೋ ಹಿಟ್ ನೀ ತುಮಾ ಅಂದ್ವಿ ವಾಡಿ ವಿಲ ಇನ್ನು ಮೇ ಪೆತ್ತೆ ತಮಾಯ್ ಒಬ್ಬ ತುಮಾ ಮೇ ಪೆತ್ತೆ ವಾಡಿ ವಿಲ ಇನ್ನೊಕ್ಕ ವಿಪಕ್ಷ ಸ್ಥಳ ಕಂಡಿಪ ಯೋಜನಾ ಆಂಡು ಪಕ್ಷ ಯುಕ್ತಿ ಸಾಗತನೆ ಒಬ್ಬ ತುಮಾ ಇಸ್ತಾವರೆ ಮುಖದ ಆಂಡು ಪಕ್ಷ ಯೋಜನಾ ಕರ್ಣಿಕ ಪಿಲಿಗನ್ ಒಬ್ಬ ತುಮಾ ಪುಟ್ಟು ಇಂಡು ನೇನಿ ಮಮ್ಮ ಈ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಕಮಿಟಿ ಸಹಭಾಗಿ ಗುಣ ಬಹುಮ ಪೆಹದಿಲಿ ಸಂಧಾನ ಕರ್ಲತಿ ಗುಣ ಅಂಡು ಕುಮಾರ ದಿಸಾ ನಾಯಕ ಮತ್ತೆ ತುಮಾಗೆ ಸ್ವಭಾವ ಕಾಲ್ತವಿ ಮೇ ಯೋಜನಾ ಹೆಟ್ಟ ದಬಸೆ ಸಾಕಿಲ್ಲಿ ವಿಪಕ್ಷ ನಾಯಕ ಪಾರ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ If you have a conscience ask your conscience even if you look at tradition it is the government who presents the central bank report the debate is proposed by the opposition vivade illanne vipaksha visin yam kisi patalima khidu vecha ka sidu vela tiyena ma ena api eka ada dawal 12 ta party leaders meeting gat tiyala katha kal iwara karam venerable dambara amilathera expressed the following views during a media briefing held today දැවැන්ත විශ්ව කර්මයේ පාර්ලිමේන්තුව උඩ එනවා කියන කතාවත් එක්ක අපේ හාමුදුරුවරු සහ සමහර වැදගත් with the idea that an all powerful being is entering parliament there is an argument being repeated by venerable theras and a number of other people who are said to be important people they are saying that it was gotabe rajapaksa who successfully ended the war and basil rajapaksa is the person who strengthened the economy and that he is the person who can strengthen the economy So the argument is that Basil Rajapaksa is the person who can and did strengthen the economy and Gotabe Rajapaksa was the person who won the war. So I would like to ask Shiranti Rajapaksa what did Mahinda Rajapaksa do? I would like to ask Namal Rajapaksa, Yoshith Rajapaksa and Chichi what did your father do? Who did the people of this country along with the Mahasangha of the country call father? and great king did mahinda rajapaksa not contribute to any of these efforts is he no one among the general public does he have no value is that what has happened now nikamigde ya olanda potta kasiyak tarangwat watinne ti hadigde ehema ne dan vela tiyenne ehema da vela tiyenne 
එහෙමද වෙලා තියෙන්නේ කියලා තමයි අපි විශේෂයෙන්ම අහන්නේ Questions were raised on the exemption of Litrogas Lanka Limited from the purview of the Auditor General. Now these queries were brought to the limelight during a meeting of the Committee on Public Enterprises yesterday. State-owned Sri Lanka Insurance Corporation holds 99% of shares belonging to the Litro Gas Lanka Limited. However, a private entity has been tasked with carrying out an audit on the company. A team of officials including Anil Koswatta, the chairman of Litro Gas Lanka Limited and a director of Sri Lanka Insurance Corporation were summoned to the Committee on Public Enterprises to discuss the matter yesterday. The group also included Sri Lanka Insurance Corporation Chairman Dr. Jagat Vallavatta. Adhyakshakatuma, then me insurance corporation make a quarter percentage of shares thin of the litro samagam, see it anonamati. Then a board deca patkar and a kauda. The Sri Lanka Insurance Corporation holds 99% of the shares in Litro Gas and appoints its director board. It functions under a ministry. Doesn't the Sri Lanka Insurance Corporation hold responsibility for the funds spent by that entity based on the decision of the director board? The Sri Lanka Insurance Corporation falls under the Auditor General. It also falls under the COPE. The COPE can then summon the Sri Lanka Insurance Corporation and its subsidiaries, either separately or at once. How can we examine these accounts? The Sri Lanka Insurance Corporation has asked for a separate Auditor General as a proxy. That is the problem. It would be resolved if this issue is addressed. We will lose the powers to audit financial accounts. Other companies will also put forward arguments. Therefore, a government audit is required. The COP should be able to examine the audit report. The Love's Gas Company currently owes 23 billion rupees to the Bank of Ceylon and the People's Bank. As far as I know, their total debt stands at 30 billion rupees. Now they have appointed a procurement committee to look into the possibility of the Litro Gas Company taking over the Love Gas Company. If you consider the current market values, Love Gas Company only possesses 25% of the shares. Upon whose whims and fancies is the government trying to take over this bankrupt company that is running at a loss? Who will receive the commission from this deal? How can a company which earned 7 billion rupees in profits transform into a company that is running with a 5 billion rupee loss? Let me outline the reasons for this. The chairman of this company submitted a board paper on the 21st of February last year to receive an allowance. During the presidential election, a promise was given to the public that chairman appointed by the Vyatmaga movement will not receive a salary beyond 100,000 rupees. But this individual who is also appointed is already drawing a monthly allowance of over 4 million rupees. Even after this board paper, he has submitted three similar board papers. Today, he is evading parliament without answering these allegations against him. If he is innocent and if he has done the correct thing, if his company has earned profits or if his company has generated funds for the country, we won't have any problem with it. Throughout history, this litro gas company has generated funds for the government. But today, it has become bankrupt. <laughs> The health ministry announced that the stock of AstraZeneca vaccines will arrive in Sri Lanka by the 19th of this month. Commander of the Army General Shavendra Silva said that Sri Lanka is expected to receive 1.4 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine. 
authorities have decided to discontinue the use of the Pfizer vaccine for those who received the AstraZeneca jab as their first dose. The health ministry said that the decision was made after receiving a confirmation on receiving a stock of AstraZeneca vaccines. AstraZeneca palamu matra lavadun selu denatum pahe. We made this decision since the second dose of the AstraZeneca jab can be administered properly. Therefore, instead of conducting tests on mixing the vaccines, it would be apt to administer the second dose using the doses which we would be receiving. This is a decision that was taken for the well-being of everyone. COVID-19 vaccines are being administered at hospitals run by the army as authorities attempt to expedite the rollout of the jabs. Vaccines were administered by the medical corps of the army under the guidance of Army Commander General Shavendra Silva, who heads the National Operations Center for Prevention of COVID-19 Outbreak. The program was successfully carried out at nine centers in Colombo, 26 centers in Mana, and also in Hambantota, Kurunagala, Gampaha, Kandy, Anuradhapura, Batiklo, Kilinochi, and Mulatip. Our correspondents reported that the people had commended army officers for their support to vaccinate differently abled individuals. Police spokesperson, attorney at law Ajit Rohana assumed duties as the senior DIG of Motor Traffic and Crimes Unit today. He assumed duties at his office in Batar Mulla while adhering to COVID-19 health guidelines. Senior Deputy Inspector General of Police Ajit Rohana will continue to serve as the police spokesperson in the future. In more local news, Central Bank Governor Professor W.D. Lakshman spoke about the country's debt obligations today. We were working towards an idea of a debt-free country. Debt-free in the sense not of zero debt, but one of easily manageable debt. The best option open to any country trying to achieve the above idea focus on real sector developments, not losing focus on stability concerns. Export growth in both traditional and modern export systems. Agricultural as well as industrial and service exports. Policy driven as well as development driven. Import reductions, of course, also coupled with increases in imports. Bloomberg reported that Sri Lanka's one-year debt default probability was at 27.9%, the steepest in Asia, up from about 13% about six months ago. This was according to a model where a reading above 1.5% signifies high risk of failure to pay. Up next is a special segment by News First in line with the National Archaeology Week. Protect our heritage. 26 kilometers along the Ampara Mahaoya main road and 2 kilometers from the Bakiela junction stands a mountain named Rajagala. The Rajagala archaeological site, claiming over 1,025 acres and standing as tall as 1,038 feet, lays claim to a history spanning 1,500 years. The Rajagala site was identified as Girukumbila Viharya in Mahavamsa and Deepavamsa. A stone inscription at the site mentions that stupas were built in the name of Arahat Mahinda and Arahat Ithya in the area, further solidifying the introduction of Buddhism to Sri Lanka. The ruins of Bound Halls, common rooms, monasteries and other historical buildings can be seen spread out through this massive site. Protect our heritage. And that's a wrap of Primetime News on TV1. To follow details of these stories and more, you can log on to our award-winning website, www.newsfirst.lk. You can also follow us on our social media platforms. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and God bless.